Thinking of yourself as an adventurer without knowing the first thing about adjusting or repairing your main adventure tool, it's about as accurate as a blind stormtrooper on a bungee cord. <laughs> Hello adventurers, my name is Diogo Guerra and this is Off-Road Of Course. Today I'm back here in Blue Motor and again using one of their T7s as my guinea pig to record this mini mini series about motorcycle suspensions. In our first video I introduced you to three new mumbo jumbo words. The compression, the rebound and the spring preload. Today we are going to talk in more detail about the spring preload and learn how to set it. And because the T7 is known for having soft springs, sometimes inadequate for heavier riders, it becomes twice as important for you to know the things I'm going to teach you today. Because this will allow you to determine if the springs installed on your motorcycle are correct for your weight and the amount of gear that you usually carry. The preload is sometimes a misunderstood subject, but it's the first thing you need to get right in order to be able to adjust your suspensions properly. And guys, I have to warn you, I'm afraid that this video will get a bit too technical and perhaps a bit too boring. I will try to make it as fun and light as possible and not go into too much detail, but uh, well, please just, just bear with me, just stick for a run. <laughs> Alright, look at this perfectly fine motorcycle. What do you think it would happen if I put a considerable amount of weight right here? That's right, the tail of the bike would squat down because the whole shock is being compressed. And this happens because the spring on your shock failed to sustain the extra weight that you applied on the motorcycle. And what this means is that you are already using half of your suspension and you didn't even turn on the bike. There must be around 3000 reasons why this is bad for your motorcycle's performance beyond the two or three reasons you're already thinking about. But gladly, motorcycles have a preload adjustment to deal precisely with these kind of problems. And this becomes very important on adventure bikes because they are multi-purpose. Sometimes you are riding alone on the road, sometimes you are riding off-road with a lot of luggage, sometimes you have a passenger, so adaptability is key. So how does the preload work? This shock is not exactly the same as the T7, this one does not have a knob to regulate the preload, but it still allows you to regulate the preload by turning this, uh, this thingy here, this ring. When this ring turns clockwise, it will compress the spring uh, a little bit, but it compresses the spring without compressing the shock itself. In fact, the more you compress the spring this way, the more it will try to extend the shock as much as possible. And this prevents your bike from squatting down out of its optimal height. Some people would think that the optimal height on a motorcycle is when it's completely extended. But this is not true. In fact, you need a considerable amount of sag. Well, in reality, you need two types of sag. The static sag and the race sag. The static sag is the difference between a fully extended suspension and the place where it naturally rests only with the weight of the motorcycle. The race sag is the difference between the fully extended suspension and the place where it naturally rests when you are sitting on the motorcycle with all your normal racing equipment. Ideally, the static sag should be around 10% of the total suspension travel or the wheel travel, and the race sag should be around 30%. But please have in consideration that these are just guideline numbers. Every adventure bike on the planet will be used in different conditions, by different riders with different expectations and skill levels. If the spring installed on your shock is correct for your motorcycle's weight and your own with all the riding gear, it should be relatively easy to find the 10-30% thing with just a few adjustments on the preload. On the other hand, if your springs are too stiff or too soft, it will be very hard to find these 10%, 30% sag values, because even if you regulate the preload, when you approach, let's say, a correct race sag, your static sag will be completely messed up. Even worse, because you'll be using a high preload or a low preload just for your own weight, Every time you want to add some luggage or a passenger, you will have no preload adjustment left to compensate for the weight. So the first thing that you need to do in order to have your suspensions correctly tuned is to make sure your springs are adequate to your own weight and riding style. So it's time to roll up our sleeves, get a few basic tools and start measuring. 
So this is what you need. You need everything you usually wear when you ride your motorcycle, like boots, helmet, jacket, backpack, whatever. You need the measuring tape. You need a pen and a paper. You need a friend to help you keep the bike straight while you do the measurements. And you need a way to lift both wheels off the ground. It can be one at a time or it can be both at the same time. It doesn't really matter. Step one is to make sure your suspension is tuned to the factory settings. According to the owner's manual, and there's a link in the description, you should first turn the preload all the way anti-clockwise, so you set it to zero. And we reach the end. The manual is pretty explicit about not forcing the knob beyond its limits. So when you feel some resistance, it means that you already hit the bottom or the top. For your information, there are 24 total clicks on the preload adjustment and the factory settings, it's 10. So now let's go 10 clicks to the right. One, two, three, nine, ten. Now for step two, we need to lift both wheels off the ground and go get the measuring tape. What we are going to do now is to use the measuring tape to measure the distance between the wheel axle and some point of our choosing completely in line with the wheel axle. So I will use this screw over here, like so, in the center of the wheel axle. And up here we have 63 and a half centimeters. And although there is no adjustment for the preload on the fork, we will measure it anyway, because if it's very wrong, we can replace the springs altogether. Here we will measure the distance between the bottom of the suspension and the beginning of the slider. About 23 and a half centimeters. And now that we have these two measurements, we can lower the bike because we will not need to lift it off the ground again. Isn't this fun? For step three, you need an extra pair of hands to keep the bike straight while you measure the static sag. So, safety first, and let's go get someone. Preciso. Que agarres aqui na moto à direita. Consegues comprimir a suspensão de trás um bocadinho? Isso, boa, excelente. E agora não faças força. 61, 19 and a half. Let's write this down. The race sag should be in tune with your riding style. So suit up with the protection equipment and load the bike with everything you usually carry. On this example, I'm just going to use the helmet and my backpack. Now sit in your normal riding position, keep the bike as straight as possible, barely touching the ground with your feet. And have a friend repeat the measurements you did before. And now for step 5 we will get all our measurements and do some math. I forgot to warn you that there would be some significant amount of math. But now it's too late anyway, please bear with me. Now, to determine the sag, we need to subtract our sag measurements out of the total extended suspension measurement. It goes like this. The static sag equals the extended measurement minus the sag measurement. And it is 2.5 in this case. Now, simply repeat this for both sags on both wheels. And now do we know if this is correct or not? Well, we know that the rear shock has a total travel of 200 mm and the front fork has a total travel of 210 mm. We also know that the static sag should be around 10% of this and the race sag 30%. So it's time to do a little bit more math. We find the sag percentage by multiplying the calculated sag by 100 and dividing the result for the suspension travel. So we get this. Okay, let's take a look at the numbers that I got. So, front static sag, 19%. Race sag, 26%. On the rear, I have 12.5 static sag and 30% race sag. Not bad. So, if this was my motorcycle, I would probably tune up the preload just a little bit because I got 30% racing sag, that's great, but I was not wearing my full equipment, the fuel tank is empty, my backpack was empty, so probably with a little bit more preload, my static sag would be exactly 10% and my race sag would be 30% even with the proper equipment. On the front we have a bit of a pickle because the static sag 19% is twice as much as it should be. 
On the other hand, the race sag is pretty much on point because 26% is below 30, but I was not wearing full gear and the fuel tank is empty. So with a normal weight, I think the race sag would be pretty much on the spot, 30%. But the static sag is way off. So what should I do? I have like probably two options. Either ignore it because the race sag is good and the race sag is more important than the static sag, especially out of the competition environment. Second option would be to talk to a suspension professional and ask if he has any sort of solution, maybe changing the springs or modifying my suspension somehow so that the static sag would be a bit closer to 10% while keeping my race sag on the 30%. Knowing me, I think I would probably not worry about it and just go on my merry way. I am not surprised with these numbers because I'm a featherweight. I weigh only 75 kilos naked. So I'm not surprised that soft springs are actually a match for me. But in your case, things could be different. So let's see three possible scenarios. Scenario one, your numbers are good. You're close to the 10% static, the 30% race sag, so you're golden. Scenario two, your numbers are not correct, but they are not too far off. So by regulating the preload up or down a little bit, you can get your race sag close to 30 without messing too much your static sag. Third scenario is your numbers are all wrong and no matter how much you regulate the preload, your static sag or your race sag will always be too far off from the 10, 30%. This can happen because you are a heavy rider or because you have determined that your normal riding style is with a lot of luggage or maybe with a passenger. So there is not enough preload to compensate for that. And in this case, I think I have bad news for you. Your best chance is to talk to a suspension professional and ask him to replace your springs. And if you are Portuguese, you are in luck because here in Blue Motor, they can measure and replace your springs for a killer price. They always give me free coffee and they let me use their internet, so... Alright guys, we are now finally done with the most laborious and tedious and uninventive part of adjusting a suspension. Next video things will be a bit more fun and way less mathematical because we will talk about the compression and the rebound. So see you there! Even if you didn't like the video but you understood its importance, please leave me a like, subscribe, hit the bell button and share, possibly with your worst enemy. Happy rides!